Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. Let's take a look at a really popular interview question, LRU Cash. It's even asked by Twitch TV. It's one of their most popular interview questions. And also don't forget to like the video, it supports the channel a lot. So this is definitely more of a design problem than an actual algorithms problem. So we have some kind of cache that's gonna store values. It has a capacity, so it's fixed size. And we wanna be able to get values from this cache based on a key value. If that key value exists, then we'll return the value that it corresponds to. If it doesn't exist, the default value we wanna return is negative one. And if we're getting values, we also need to be able to put values into the cache. We're putting them in based on key value pairs. And there's a lot of edge cases and they explain a bit of them to us. If the key already exists in the cache, then we just wanna update the value. If it doesn't already exist, then we're inserting it for the first time so we can put that key value pair into the cache. And remember, this does have a fixed size capacity. So if we ever exceed the capacity, then we have to evict the least recently used. So that's why this is called the LRU cache problem. And it also makes sense, right? If there's a key that we're not really using, then that's the one that we're gonna take out of the cache. And this is actually pretty similar to how browsers work. So for example, if you're using Chrome and you know web browsers have caches, if there are values that we're not really using in, those, in that cache, then of course we can remove them. Let's also try to solve this the most efficient way, which is each of these operations, get and put, are gonna be constant time operations. And it's gonna be kind of tricky, but it's definitely possible. So let's just look at the first example. So the input is two. So that's something that we need to kind of remember, right? The capacity is two in this case. And the next operation is put. So we're putting a pair of one, one, key one, value one. And we're gonna keep these kind of in order, right? Because we wanna remove the least recently used. So we gotta kind of remember in what order are we adding these values in. The next one is another put operation and we're putting two, two. Of course, for these first three operations, we're not really returning anything. So the output is gonna be null. So next we're actually doing a get operation and we wanna get the value that has a key of one. And remember, we're trying to do this as fast as possible. We're trying to do each operation in constant time. So how can we know instantly what the value is when the key is one? Well, the easiest way to do that would be with a hash map, right? So we're gonna use a hash map to instantly look up the value of every key. We can of course do this in constant time and we know that we that the size of this hash map doesn't need to exceed our capacity. So we can have only two values here, right? So for the key value, we can use the same value that we use for each of our nodes. And we could, and for the value, we could also do the same thing. We could use the same value that we use in our nodes, but I'm gonna show you why it's gonna be a little bit better for us instead to have the value be a pointer to the node itself. And we can do the same thing with the second node that we inserted as well. So for key value two, we're gonna point at this node. So now finally, when we call this get and we ask for the key one, we're gonna return the value one that's over here, which is exactly what the output tells us is correct. So since we just used the get operation to get this one, we went to our key, then we found this value, and then we returned that value, that makes this the most recently used value, and this is the least recently used value now. So I'm gonna keep track of the most recent and least recent by having a left and right pointers, right? So this left side is gonna be the least recently used, and the right over here is gonna be the most recent. So therefore, we're basically gonna be swapping these two nodes, right? And so this, par this portion of the problem is starting to, to keep the ordering of these. It looks like we're gonna need a linked list. And not only a linked list, but a double linked list. 
because remember, we can easily look up where these values are, but if we want to also reorder them quickly by, by for example, every time we use a get operation, we wanna take this value and then move it over here because it was the most recent. And so now we're gonna reorder the two nodes. So now this is the least recently used and this is the most recently used. And since this is a doubly linked list, we need the pointers to be connected. Of course, the, the hash map won't really need to be updated because these are pointers. They're already gonna be pointing to the correct ones and I'm not gonna show that. And now we can get to the most interesting operation, the third put. So we're putting a third value, key value, three, three. And since three is greater than our capacity of two, then we're gonna have to remove the least recently used value and convenient for us, we know exactly what that value is. So first we're gonna end up updating these pointers to make the least recently used one one and get rid of this. And of course we wanna replace that two since we know it's the least recently used. We wanna replace it with the new key three. And now we also wanna update that pointer. We want it to point at the new node. And since the new node three three is the most recent, we're gonna put it over here, three three. And the pointer is gonna point here. This pointer is gonna point here and there's gonna be a double link between them. So this is basically the main idea. We're gonna keep track of a capacity we're gonna have a double linked list. We're gonna have a hash map where the key of the hash map is gonna be the same key that we get from the input and the value is gonna be a pointer to the nodes. And each node is gonna look something like this. And it's gonna have two pointers, remember? So it's gonna have a previous pointer and a next pointer. And don't forget about this right and this left. These are also gonna be nodes because we want to have pointers. We wanna be able to instantly know what's the least recently used and what's the most recently used. So these are gonna be dummy nodes pretty much. So getting into the code, remember we're gonna need a node. So before we even write this LRU cache class, let's make another class for that node that we're gonna use. And remember each node is gonna have a key value pair. So we're gonna get those. We're gonna initialize those. And we're also gonna have two pointers, one for the previous node and one for the next node. And they're both gonna initially be set to null. Now when we actually get into the LRU class, we know that the capacity needs to be stored because we wanna know if we ever go over that capacity. We also need a hash map and I'm gonna call that our cache and the, remember this is gonna map, map the key to nodes. And before we even have any values in our cache, we want to have a couple dummy pointers, a couple dummy nodes, which tell us what are the most recent and least recent uh, values that we added. So we can just initialize these to zero for the default values, so zero, zero. And initially we want these nodes to be connected to each other because if we're inserting a, if we're putting a new node, we wanna put it in the middle between left and right. And we can do that with some pointer stuff. So left.next is gonna be right and right.previous is gonna be left. And remember left is gonna help us find the least recently used and right is gonna be most recent. So now let's start with our get function because it's mostly straightforward. If the key exists, so if the key is in our cache, then we can return that value, right? So we can return self.cache of key. Now this tells us the node, remember, because each key is mapped to a node so to get the value we can just do dot val and of course if it doesn't exist they wanted us to just return negative one now the only thing we're forgetting with this get is that every time we get a a 
value, we want to update it to the most recent. So to help us with this part, I'm actually gonna write a couple helper functions. So I'm gonna write I'm going to write a remove and insert helper function. And these helper functions are going to be applied to our linked list. So we're going to pass in the node that we want to remove from our, our doubly linked list. And I'm also going to write a function to insert into our linked list. And when we insert, we're going to insert at right. And the remove is just going to remove from the list. So these are basically going to be pointer functions. We're going to be manipulating some pointers from our left, from our right, and doing some stuff. So I'm not even going to worry about that. I, all I know is that we have a helper function that can remove any node from our list and a helper function that can insert any node at the rightmost position of our linked list. So since we're getting what we want to do to our list is take this node uh, self dot cache of key and remove it from our list. And after we remove it, then we want to reinsert it at the rightmost position. So we can just do self And looking at this, get isn't so bad as long as we fill out these two helper functions for us. So now when we actually look at our put function, let's remember that if we have a key that's already in our cache, that means that a node already exists in our list with that same key value. So before we can insert this new key value pair, we want to remove from our list so we can get that node by getting our cache and using the key value. So these helper functions are definitely coming in handy for us. So now we can create a new node with this key value pair. So node key value and we can put that in our hash map. So now our hash map has a pointer to this node, but remember that's not enough. We also have a doubly linked list. So we need to take this node and insert it into our list. So insert and just pass in the node, which is cache of the key value. So the node is stored here and we pass that node into our insert function. Okay, so we just inserted a new value, but remember we have a capacity to worry about. So every time we insert a value, we got to check, did, does the length of our cache now exceed the capacity? If it does, this is the part where we're going to we're going to remove and delete or evict the mo uh, the least recently used. So we're going to remove it from the list, the linked list, and delete the LRU from the cache or the hash map. So how do we actually find the node for the LRU? Well, this is why we have our left and right pointers. Remember, the left pointer is all the way at the left, and it's going to tell us what the least recently used was. So left left.next is always going to be the least recently used. And so first we're going to remove it from our linked list by just passing in the node. And we're also going to delete it from our hash map. So self.cache. And we want the key of this node, which is actually stored in the node itself. This is why we didn't only store the, the value, we also store the key in our node class. So we don't have to return anything in put, but we do now have to fill out these two helper functions, remove and insert. So if you have three nodes and you want to remove the middle node, what do you do? Well, you take this pointer and move it over here and you take this pointer and move it over here. So this stuff is no longer relevant and we have removed the middle node. This is going to be referred to as our previous node. This is referred to as our next node. 
So when we're writing this function, node is going to be the middle node. So we want to get the previous and next nodes of node. So we can just get the pointer. So node.previous, node.next. All we want to do is say that previous.next should be updated and next.previous should be updated. These are the two pointers of the next and previous nodes. So previous.next should be next. Next.previous should be previous. So now node is no longer in between previous and next. The last thing we need to do is fill out our insert function, which what we want it to do is insert a node at the rightmost position uh, right before our right pointer. So let's say this is our right pointer. We want to insert right here. And this is going to be our previous pointer. So when we have our new node that we're trying to insert, what we want to do is take this pointer and reassign it to that, this pointer and reassign it over here. And we also want this node to be connected to its neighbor. So we're going to have the next pointer over here and the previous pointer to be here. So in this case, our previous and next pointers we can get by using our rightmost pointer. So self.right.previous and self.right. Now we want both previous and next to point to node. So we can do that like this. Previous.next is going to be equal to next.previous, which is going to be equal to node. They're both pointing at node. Node has been inserted in the middle of them and node dot next and node dot previous also need to be assigned to next and previous. So this is quite a lot of code, about 44 lines with some space and comments in between. But this is how you get the most optimal solution for this problem. And of course, I had a bug. So I misspelled something. I'm really hoping that's the only bug here because I do not want to search for a bug in these lines of code. Okay, so we got it to pass. So I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.